Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is up 39. Nasdaq's up 28. S&Ps are up one and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestack, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex dash trading dash unlock dot com that's forex dash trading dash unlock dot com teddy cake sack what's going on brother morning guys how you doing good morning teddy we're doing good man hey we got fed day today we're gonna have some uh, movement in these currencies we do have fed day today you know and it's pretty interesting last week how we were talking about the dollar pushing the move towards into the end of the week and we got the rebound we were looking for that possible profit take profit taking move so um, now the really interesting thing is to see what's leading and what's not with the dollar today. You have the euro and the pound, the two big weights on the, in the dollar index that are positive, but the U.S. dollar Swiss is the one that's making the big move. That one fell out of bed today. So yeah, um, yeah the other ones have been rallying since Friday, but the Swissy was kind of holding kind of neutral underneath these highs, and then today it released. So, and the interesting thing is, remember we were talking about the strength in the dollar, where was it really the dollar or was it the weakness and more of the other yes. lesser measures? You know, and if you look at um, the New Zealand dollar as well as the Australian dollar, they're not acting like the other currencies are against the dollar today. Okay. So um, it's kind of a, I would say, a, a balancing out. You know, it's, it's, it was end of the month yesterday. Unlike the stock market where they try and settle um, positions and things like that, currency traders are, are different, you know. So we're heading into this Fed time, you know, and I think one of the key things they're looking at are the numbers that came out recently, um, the GDP number yeah. um, and the earnings numbers. So if we didn't have this dovish Fed or this global dovish, I, um, basically across the board, central bank uh, leaning, I would say that they would probably be leaning towards raising rates right now, you know, to kind of slow things down a little bit. Um, so it'll be really interesting to hear if there's any talk of that today. Because right. that's been pretty much off the table. Now, right? Teddy, how do you look at, like, I, I have the euro up here, right? Right. Okay. Now, how do you look at, like, when I look at this, and, you know, and I'm not, to me, it looks like it comes back inside its range again. But how does a currency trader look at that? Is that saying that the euro oh. has a shot to go higher now? Or how, how would you look at that? That's a really good point. Now, if you look at how it's traded, like right now, it looks like it's a corrective upside move because it's been basically in a bear trend since the... Uh, the end of the end of, end of yeah. middle of March, right? Yes. So, so if you just look at it from that short term view, it looks like a corrective rally, and especially because it's coming back into that mid range where it's basically been chopping around. Right. You know, it almost looks like a pattern, kind of like the old um, sine wave. You know, it's just like you see it kind of just balancing up across a median line. Yeah. You know, it's basically the one twelve half to one thirteen area. So if you're just looking at it in the short run, I would say expect choppy conditions and kind of look for this to kind of be the buffer zone. Okay. Okay. Now, if we have a difference of opinion with the Fed today, that's when we could see. Now, if you take like that recent high back in the end of March and then also into the high of mid-April, kind of use that downward sloping trend line. Yeah. If we reach that and then get up to the 113 half area, that would be a very bullish sign that at least takes off the bearish sentiment for the euro us dollar trade i you know so now you're breaking the trend line so you're looking at it the same way you're just breaking the trend line which is pretty cool right okay great all right sure and now if, if that momentum breaks see that's the thing is it's been in this short-term bear trend and no matter what the euro has not been able to gain strength against the dollar it can't get up to that 114 115 116 area yes and and usually when you can't get below 111.5, 111, or 112 area, the euro bounces, goes back to 116, and it'll try and spike to 118. We failed to do that so far this year. Right. You know. Right. So I think that if you, especially if the Fed comes out remotely changing the dovish sentiment, you know, and then you also have to look at Venezuela. Um, this, if this coup happens and it becomes bullish and good for the American trade zone. Um, then you'd probably see a little release in oil, okay? So, and if the release in oil happens, then those are other four positive things for our economy, which may make the Fed think twice, you know, about staying on this dovish stance. So it'll be interesting to see what they say at 115. I would say that if you're in a position right now with the currencies, obviously use a tight stop. Um, be careful of a really whipsaw trade in the afternoon. 
Um, and that would be really, like I said, is if their their consensus is that they're worried about the growth. You know, and I think that if we were dealing with a different Fed, like a Fed of a year ago or two years ago, they would look at these GDP numbers, the earnings numbers, and say that the economy is overheating, in my opinion. You yeah, know? no, no, I, it's, it's, there's a lot of moving parts right now, man. 3.2% of GDP, sure. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Exactly. And these are things that weren't expected, you yeah. know, so to see how they filter that will be very interesting. I think that oil will be a key, especially see if the Venezuela thing can get smoothed out because that means supplies are definitely going to increase again, you know, um, yeah, and then how that, you know, and we just got the EIA numbers, man. And they're, they're, they're it's almost 10 million barrel built. Yeah. Where's the, right. Uh, right. And it's the refining part that's, that's hitting us right now with the gas, you know? Yeah. So, so we'll see how that balances. I mean, this build can't keep on going in the summertime and gas prices not eventually start to go down as they turn from the, uh, to whatever the winter grade to the, uh, to the summer grade you know so but those variables i think are kind of interesting because we talked about before last week in the last couple of weeks how the dollar is driving earnings in the market and may continue to do so into the third and fourth quarters so if we do get a stabilization in venezuela and if the fed remains in this dovish outlook even amidst these growing factors then i think you're going to see a very big acceleration of the economy and this is where we might see a turn in the dollar, okay? Because as oil drops down and as the economy continues to go up, then we should probably see the, um, the, the lesser majors as well as the majors go, but not just go into the range, back into their trading range, but to go take away, um, you know, the trend again from the dollar That's strength. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I see yeah, what you're right. saying. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the dollar wouldn't even have to move that if the economy is going so good, it's just like everything else. Those other economies will start going better so their currencies can go up versus the dollar. Right. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, and then it, what it'll do is it'll have a, a balancing effect where most people would say as the dollar weakens, it's, it's not good for us. But as, if we have an accelerating economy and the dollar gets weaker, that means our exports grow. Yep. Correct? You know, so in all those things, it'll balance out our earnings, you know, which I think means that unless we have a major shakeup like Venezuela goes bad, Oil continues to rally up to eighty, ninety dollars, yep. and something else like that. Those are the only things that I could see that would really shake up the economy towards a really negative way. In which case, you're going to see some incredible movement in the dollar versus the major currencies. Yeah, and you know that there's no doubt. The uh, it's nice seeing oil come down today. I mean, because gasoline, you know, none of us buy barrels of oil, but everyone buys gasoline. Man. I'm saying I don't yeah. want to see ninety dollar oil. No, no. <laughs> no. diesel's no. cheaper than gas. Yeah, well, that's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, folks, every trading day you can check out Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. And that, that oil just took another dive down, right? Did it? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to love that. Yeah. Teddy, you have a great week, safe week. Oh, hey, I hope you did good good golf last week, man. You were going off golfing, man. It was all right. It's good. I'm golf. sure. Thanks. Hey, we look forward to speaking to you next week, man. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Thanks. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have oil right sure now, uh, 63.18. Yeah. $63.18. Come right back.